Um, so we're going to move on to um, Yongjun Wang now, um, who is also from the School of Mechanical Engineering as a, a, a research fellow there. And he is going to talk about distributed optimal control for fluid structure interaction problems. So if you'd like to share your screen, Yongjun, yeah. over to you. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see okay. that perfect. So good, good afternoon. So I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, optimal control method for fluid structure interaction problems. Yeah. So all my talk will be based on an example and uh, I will use this example to um, uh, introduce a piecewise in time control method and uh, la the Lagrange multiply method. So this is a lead driven cavity flow problem. And there is a disc sit uh, inside of the cavity and the horizontal velocity is prescribed at the top of the cavity. And you can imagine the disc will start to move and rotate. Uh, so yeah, this is how it looks like. Right. So these are all the partial differential equations in order to describe this fluid structure interaction problems. Right, we have the momentum equation uh, with a forcing term. Uh, we, we will use this force term F, the blue F, to uh, control as a control variable later. And we have the continuous equation, constitutive equations, where we use a Newtonian fluid and uh, incompressible new Hocken solid. Okay, so you may notice we consider both the incompressible fluid and incompressible solid. And we also introduce the uh, viscous term in the uh, high perielectric solid model. These two features are very common for a uh, two mesh method we're going to use later. So uh, this is the uh, equations. So the question we want to ask is, um, can we use a distributed force on the solid body to control the movement of the solid disk? For example, uh, we pull or push the solid disk to a given position, you know, in a simple case, to the original position. So you might think, oh, it's, it, it's easy. You, you just apply a force towards the original position. However, you know, this distributed force depends on both time and space, right? So we also have the flow field around the, uh, around the moving disk, which, in, which will interact and uh, have influence on the disk. In addition, you know, we have a very solid disk, very soft disk, so it's not a rigid body, right? So it's, it's far from an easy thing, actually. So in general, we give a objective function, objective displacement, and uh, we solve a minimization problem as shown in equation five. So we, we minimize the difference between the current displacement and the uh, at a given displacement. We also have a regularization terms, the, uh, the red term, which uh, we want to control the magnitude of the force itself. An easy interpretation of a, regular, a regularization term is that uh, we don't want uh, an infinite force. Or we don't want the force too, uh, too large. Okay, so this means the smaller the regularization parameter alpha is, the more we can reduce our real objective, which is the first term. Okay, uh, but, but a too small alpha may cause instability issue uh, because may, we lose control of our force, of, of the controlling force F. You may also notice that uh, our objective function involves uh, integra, uh, integration in both space and time, which is actually complicated. 
And uh, a, a simplified version is the so-called piecewise in time control. And in which case, we minimize the objective in every, every single time step, okay, as described in equation six. You, you might say these two problems are not equivalent with each other. Uh, right, uh, they are not equivalent. Uh, however, this piecewise control method is classically or traditionally proved that uh, very, effect very effective to solve this kind of um, uh, velocity tracking or you know, steering velocity. Uh, minimizing the discre discrepancy of velocity, this type of optimization problem is very effective. So here we we use this piecewise control method to solve um, the steering displacement type of optimization problem. So as far as I know, it's uh, the uh, it has not um, uh, been proved whether the solution exists. Uh, uh, you know the convergence. The stability has not been approved in this case, uh, but, but let's try it out and uh, let, let's implement it first, okay? So another issue of our minimization problem is that um, we have a par con constraint of partial differential equations, uh, which from uh, the fluid at a solid mechanics, okay? And made the problem even uh, come more complicated. So the classical way to deal with this constraint is to introduce the so-called um, Lagrange multiplier method. Okay, so we have the Lagrange multiplier u hat and p hat, or some, or you can call it the adjoint variable, and uh, we have the red red term, which is the object, objective function. And the blue terms are related to the solid equation after time discretization. And the other terms are from the fluid equation. Or precisely speaking, it's from an augmented fluid equation. Right? We extended the fluid domain to the whole domain. Okay, because we later we're going to use a you know a two-mesh method. So we want to cancel out all the integration in the fluid domain. And we end up with the, the whole domain integration in the whole domain and the solid domain, right? Um, we also express the solid deformation tensor in terms of velocity. So our variable, our unknowns, uh, are velocity only. Uh, of course, we have pressure as well, right? And in this case, we also choose, uh, you know, we introduce the viscous, uh, viscous term in the solid model, but here we simply choose the viscosity of the solid and the fluid are the same, just for the purpose of simpl uh, simplicity. Okay, so in order to compute the minimum, uh, we, we have to take the derivative of this Lagrange functional with respect to all the variables. Uh, this is the so-called KKT condition. Okay, the derivative with respect to F, to the control variable F, gives the so-called optimality condition, uh, which is simple in this case. Uh, and it is related to the adjoint variables of the Lagrange multiplier, the U hat. Okay, you can see from equation eight, which is also unknown, also a variable. And we have to solve the primary equation at the adjoint equation in order to, you know, in order to compute this adjoint variable. So the primary equation is from the derivative with respect to the, uh, to the Lagrange multiplier u hat and p hat at the adjoint equation is derived from the derivative with, with respect to the original uh, variable u at p. Okay, so these three equations are the uh, um, stationary, uh, sometimes called stationary equation or critical point in order to 
compute the minimum, we actually can substitute equation eight into the other equation, other two equations to get a, a fully coupled uh, formulation. You know, in this in this piecewise control method, we can substitute equation eight into the other two equations. Okay. Um, so this is the so-called monolithic scheme. We solve the whole system, you know, the uh, the primary variables, the adjoint variables in a whole big system. Previously, we developed uh, uh, the so-called one velocity field method using two meshes for the forward problem only, for the fluid structure interaction problem. So the idea is expressed is a, express a solid displacement or the deformation tensor in terms of velocity after time discretization. We actually have already done this, you know, in the previous slides when we write down the Lagrange functional. So we end up with a, a one velocity field. Okay. We use when, when we say using two meshes, we look at the animation again. We, I mean we have um, we have background mesh to represent the augmented fluid field. Okay. Yongjing, we can't see your animation, uh, I don't okay. think. It's uh, just showing a blank screen at that point. So my, I might want to share how to share a screen again. Yeah, you might have to drop the screen share off and just share again. So, oh, there we go. That's perfect. You can see that. Okay. If I, okay. <laughs> so we have a back, Yeah, sorry. We have a background mesh to represent the fluid field and uh, 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 another mesh floating above to represent a solid mesh, okay? So this is a so-called two mesh method, which is very convenient to, to handle a large solid deformation uh, of this kind of fluid structure interaction problem. Now we uh, come back to our slide. Hope you can see it. Can, can you see my slide? Yes, can see your slide. Good. So, So the feature of this two mesh method is that um, we end up adding two matrices from the fluid and a solid after space discretization. Okay, the red matrices and vectors are from the solid equation and the other metrics are from the, from the fluid equation. So this is very familiar to the classic uh, Immersion method actually, you know, the immersion method using a singular forcing term, very similar to the one, the red F in equation 14. But now we we also modified the, uh, the, the left hand side of the equation. We also uh, modified the uh, matrix. So as showing equation three, so equation 13, right? So it's kind of, a, we end up with a more balanced uh, equation system, uh, which means uh, more stability, more stable, I think. So the metric P is the interpolation matrix in order to transform the information between the two meshes. Okay, this is a so-called one velocity field, uh, uh, two mesh method, it's a monolithic scheme. And uh, now we can integrate the uh, adjoint equation into the monolithic school as well, which means we, we solve all the variables, including the primary variable u and p, the, ad, the adjoint variable u hat and p hat together in a big equation system as shown in equation 16. Okay, so here I only write down the, uh, the solid uh, equations, you know, the, the the fluid bit is kind of classic, is sit in a stationary background mesh. So the all the blue terms are related to the prime variables of the uh, solid equation, and the red terms uh, are the corresponding uh, adjoint part. Okay, we we also have the green green terms, which is a forcing term actually, but. Uh, I substitute the expression of the force into the equation. So it's 
it's now it's uh, expressed as the adjunct variable u hat. And the last uh, last term at the bottom of the uh, slide is actually the derivative of the um, the derivative of the object function. Okay. Um, so the this uh, slide showed the um, uh, show the result of um, the reduction of the objective function uh, for different uh, regularization parameters. Uh, you might see the smaller the parameter is, and um, you know the more we can reduce the objective function. But um, you know, although we have some slight oscillation there, so I'm going to show the animation again. Let's see whether you can see it. Uh, yes, can see. Good, good. Okay, so this is first. Um, all right. So in the second animation, uh, I think we have to wait for a while to let it run again. Okay. Right. So the mesh shows the real physics when I apply the uh, the forcing term when I apply the control force. So the the solid has been uh, pulled back to the original position, and the circle here is the case uh, you know with without control. Okay, great. And um, so I also plot the uh, reduction of obje objective function. Uh, you know, at different uh, control uh, point, you know, we can we can pull back the solid uh, at different times, and from the, this finger we can see that uh, uh, it's uh, successfully be uh, reduced. The objective function has been reduced about um, eighty percent. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's all my talk today.